If you're a motorist in the state of Pennsylvania, this video may be the most important video you'll ever see. With the holidays quickly approaching, Pennsylvania State Police and local police are busy planning more and more DUI roadblocks and DUI-focused saturation patrols. Even if you're completely innocent, you will likely be stopped as a result of one of them. Okay, here's the truth that no one will tell you but me. If you're stopped by the police at night, and if they even think you are drunk, or they think that you may smell of alcohol, you're going to be arrested. No matter what you say, or do, or what the evidence is, you're going to be arrested. That's a shame. So what can you do about it, and why does it happen? Most police officers adopt a, quote, better safe than sorry approach, because if they are wrong and they turn out not to arrest someone who later turns out to be drunk, and that person hurts property or people or kills someone, then they will be fired and the municipality or state will be sued. So the bad news is, if you hear those words, have you been drinking? Or how much have you had to drink? Or please step out of the car now, sir. You're going to be arrested no matter what you do. There's nothing you can do about it other than try and protect yourself from a false conviction after this false accusation. That's why I put together a short and handy guide of what you should do if you're ever pulled over by the police for DUI in Pennsylvania. Number one, shut up. It's just that simple. No one can talk their way out of a DUI, so don't even try. You can only hurt yourself by talking. Don't admit to drinking any amount of alcohol or say anything, and most especially, don't lie. Don't say, I had a few or I had two. Just politely say to the officer, Officer, I choose to remain silent. Provide the necessary documents and remain silent. Talking will only give the officer more evidence to use against you. Staying silent is the best thing you can do for yourself, and it is your right. Our number two tip is to refuse the roadside DUI test. There are two types of tests the officer may ask you to perform at roadside. First are the awkward and high pressure and truly purposeless game of Simon Says, such as the alphabet test or the finger count test. And then there are the standardized field sobriety tests, which are equally worthless, or the SFSTs. With the FSSTs, you will be told to follow the officer's finger, called the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, which is inadmissible totally in Pennsylvania, yet police all across the state continue to conduct it for some unknown reason. The walk a straight line test, which is formerly called the walk and turn test, and the stand on one leg while counting out loud test, called the one leg stand. These tests are not scientifically valid and are designed for failure. Furthermore, police officers incorrectly administer these DUI tests, leading to many false arrests and false positives. Once again, this can only be used as evidence against you and will not help you in any way, shape, or form. These tests are totally optional, and your best bet is to politely refuse. You will not be penalized for not doing them, in fact, by not playing the high-pressure, meaningless game of Simon Says at roadside, you will provide the officer with less data to justify his reason to arrest you. Less data and in information means that their justification in arresting you is weaker, and in fact, they may have no justified reason at all. It may result in there being insufficient evidence to justify your arrest and therefore suppressing all the after-acquired evidence, causing your arrest and your case to be dismissed. The other test that the police may ask you to perform is called a portable breath test, or PBT. You may think to yourself that these tests are accurate and valid. You may even think that because, in truth, you only had one beer or one drink, that you could not possibly be over the limit, and you would be dead wrong. These handheld PBTs are not precise and create false positives all the time. Once again, this PBT test is voluntary. You're not required to do a PBT test. If you do not perform a PBT test upon request at roadside, you cannot be charged with a refusal for it, and the jury will not even hear about the refusal to do it either. In fact, you should not do it at all. As these things are not specific to alcohol, and they're not accurate, you are voluntarily providing the police with more evidence against you. To do so does not make sense since you're 100% innocent. These tests are optional, and you should politely refuse. Number three, request an independent blood test. If the police take you into the station for a full evidentiary breath test, 
or the booking center or hospital for a blood test, you have the right to request an independent blood test. They will tell you that uh, and that you have that right to an independent test, but you do. You simply tell them that you want them to follow the law. In section 1547 of the Vehicle Code, we find the following language in subsection H. Test by personal physician. The person tested shall be permitted to have a physician of his own choosing administer an additional breath, blood, or urine chemical test, and the result of these tests shall also be admissible in evidence. So in other words, you have no fear requesting that, and because any unreasonable delay in your release could frustrate your ability to get the second test and cause the original police-generated test to be suppressed. And don't worry about it if you're in fact over the limit, as the police will likely delay and not give you the opportunity to perform the second test anyway. Also, you have to remember that the DUI crime labs that the police use are often overworked and underpaid and at times do not follow proper standards. Very few attorneys check their work. We always do. We frequently find errors that lead to challenge of the validity of the test result. The risk of false positive from lab error is high, and you can read more about it on our various blogs. Number four, write things down. Another important piece of advice is to write things down. Try to establish what we call a drinking history by going back and getting witnesses' names and addresses so we can later go back with our investigator to try and make a true pharmacological history. People forget things and writing things down will help preserve the details. Remember, details provide for truth. Truth wins cases. Details win cases. The important thing to take note of is who can confirm how little you had to drink and over what period of time, as well as your stomach contents, meaning what you had to eat. With this and other information we can gather, we can construct your true blood alcohol content and what it should have been at the time of driving or the time of the test to refute the state's evidence. In addition, we want to talk to everyone who saw you so we can present witnesses that refute the officer's claim that you appeared drunk and instead that you were in charge of your full faculties, that you made sense, and that you weren't stumbling when they last saw you. Finally, we want to interview any passengers in your car and those who did not stop you from driving so that we can gain their estimation from those who know you better than the police officer who met you for the first time at roadside and know you better in that context overall, whether or not you're capable of safe driving and how they thought that you were fine to drive and that they care about you and others and would not possibly let you leave and drive a car if they thought you were drunk. Number five, call a qualified Pennsylvania DUI attorney immediately. The best way to help yourself is to call a qualified Pennsylvania DUI attorney immediately. We have a 24-hour DUI helpline at 1-866-McShane. As mentioned before, details win cases. The earlier you get us involved, the better we can prepare your case. There are also time-sensitive steps that need to be completed early on. For example, if your case involves a DUI refusal, you must appeal within 30 days or else your license suspension will stand. You will also want to consult a qualified attorney for your preliminary hearing. The preliminary hearing is the most important and crucial legal step in the very beginning of your DUI defense, and you must, I suggest, have an attorney present to represent you for your case.